As the days get shorter and the nights turn colder, a sort of magic fills the air. Magic that turns your cheeks red, makes your nose run, and in many, brings out a childlike sense of joy. Winter creeps in and the city grows quiet, and the mountains come alive. Enter our main character for this story, Jared Calhoun. Jared, like many college students, is always on the search for a good time, so it's no wonder why his schooling will lead him to the desert, where there's no shortage of tea times, skate parks, or ultraviolet rays. While in high school, Jared found skiing, and since, has fallen madly in love with sliding over the snow. But there's uh, just one problem. There's no snow in the forecast for Phoenix, Arizona. And so he's off. Our hero embarks on his adventure to escape the mundane and maybe find himself along the way. With no particular destination in mind, heading back to his skiing routes seemed to be the path of least resistance. Now, this is the part of the film where the main character reunites with childhood friends, and the narrator explains why they are important to the story. So, I think I'll do just that. Cade Gerlach and Clark Gilbert. Much like Jared, Cade and Clark didn't learn to ski till they were old enough to drive themselves to the mountain. Cade Gerlach. His family thinks he's a scientist, and although he would agree, Cade considers himself more along the lines of a gardener. Between the hours of 9 to 5, Cade is an expert on all things cannabis. Contrary to popular belief, Cade's never smoked the green leaf, but his employer sure does offer a great retirement plan. Clark is a lifeguard at the community pool. If his boss were to ask him why he wanted the job, I'm sure he would say something about how he's so passionate about the safety of our local youth. But, um, Clark? Yeah, can't stand kids. The local mountain raised the price of lift tickets, so yeah, he can't quit just yet. Well, at least, not until spring. The word came in from a friend that the storm of the year just hit east of Portland. With no time for further questions, our crew loaded up to chase after the snow. Now, social media might have you fooled, but if you can believe it, there's still a population of people that don't get paid to spend every day in the mountains. The weekend warriors, you might call them. Monday through Friday, they are at the mercy of the theoretical man who makes sure they clock in and out when they're supposed to working hard to pay off student loans and keep a roof over their head. Saturday and Sunday, the world is their oyster. Now, their friend was right. He had seen the conditions with his own eyes. Nick Nygaard, Division I collegiate baseball player. Another childhood friend of our crew who spends more of his time on the mound these days rather than the mountain. When he's not running bases, Nick is tracking weather patterns and scouting pillow runs. All things to ensure a successful weekend. They only have time to get together a few days a year, so when they do, it's truly something special.
Sometimes you have to remind yourself that it's okay to do something for the sake of finding the joy in it. We get so caught up in landing the next trick or getting that promotion, then one day we wake up and realize there never was an end goal. All that time we spent stressing over the future, those were the best days of our lives. Because at the end of the day, we are all pursuing the same feeling. A feeling that is fulfilled by the company of good friends and freshly fallen snow. Saturday turns into Sunday, and Monday creeps into sight. The hardest part about good times is leaving them in the rearview mirror. But that's how we know that we have something worthwhile. It's so hard to leave behind. The story is almost over, and our heroes have yet to defeat the villain or slay the dragon. Who or what is the ultimate evil of this story? And what have our characters been fighting all along? Time. This movie isn't about skiing, it's about friends. Friends prioritizing each other in a world where time is ever fleeting and life is measured in moments. Or even a weekend at the mountain. And like, uh, I'll stand up, Jared. <laughs> More dancing. There's like a quarter left. I don't think he's cool. There was a little bit left. Not, just... Not a lot, but like a little. Welcome to clips of the screw ups for stuck in the revolving door. Hey, he's out here. Hey, yo, do you like come in here or something?